we're on the record at 3.55 p.m. Ms. Holmes, did you have any substantive conversations with the SEC staff during the break? No. I'm going to hand to you what's been marked, or previously marked, as Theranos Exhibit 260. <coughs> Exhibit 260 reports to be a December 4th, 2014 letter from Elizabeth Holmes to Mr. Rupert Murdoch with starting dates number KRM underscore SEC 00000872. Have you seen Exhibit 260 before? <coughs> Not like this, but yes, the letter. Um, what do you mean? By you haven't seen like this. Oh, well, it looks what like part it's of it got looks unfamiliar? Check marks and underlines. Okay. Um, did you draft and send uh, the letter without the check marks and underlines um, on Exhibit <coughs> 260 on or about December 4th, 2014? Um, I, I don't know if if I drafted it then. And I think I may have worked with some people in drafting it, but I, I did send this letter to Rupert Murdoch. Okay, so if you turn to the second page, um, which is 873, the first full paragraph down on that page, it says, Theranos has grown from cash from its contracts for some time. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Was this statement true in December 2014? I think so. Why do you think so? Um, over the past years, we had received payments from insurance companies and retailers and that had helped us to grow. Isn't it true that Theranos uh, was running out of cash in 2010 and therefore had to go out and raise new capital and again was running out of cash in 2013 and had to go out and raise new capital? Um, we, we raised capital, yes, in 2010 and 2013, and needed to raise capital at different points in time. Okay. Were you concerned that this sentence would give the impression that Theranos was operating based on cash it was receiving from business partners and other customers, and, and not actually from investor capital? Not at the time. You said not at the time. Are you concerned now that it would create that impression? No, I, I understand the question that you're asking, but we had also disclosed that we've done equity raises in 2010 and in 2013. Um, Did you ever tell investors or potential investors that those equity raises, um, that Theranos did not conduct those equity raises because Theranos needed money? I'm sorry, because Theranos <coughs> just left. Let me, let me start again. Did you ever tell investors or potential investors that Theranos uh, conducted those equity raises not because Theranos needed the money? No, not that I'm aware of. Did you ever hear much about <coughs> money in that statement? I don't think so. And then here you also note, the next sentence says, the company has no debt and has no plans to take on any debt financing. Do you see that? Yes. And so um, I think your earlier answer, you said that you, you believe that that was true because you didn't consider the convertible notes to be debt. Is that right? Yes. I generally remember thinking that those notes were going to be converting into equity. The next paragraph there, it says, as the company gains visibility, we have had interest from a large number of funds in acquiring an equity stake in Theranos. What what were the what were the funds that ex had um, expressed acquiring an equity stake in Theranos at this time? Um, I'm just reading the, the next sentence. Um, I believe, I, I, so I, I don't remember sitting here now what we were thinking when we wrote this. I, I think this is just a reference to venture capital type organizations or um, private equity organizations that wanted the company to rapidly go public and we really wanted to stay private for an extended period of time. So do you recall any venture capital companies 
that it expressed interest in state uh, in acquiring a equity stake in Theranos in 2014? I, I recall that there was a lot of um, investors who were interested in Theranos in 2014. I, I don't remember um, who specifically um, I was referring to in this letter. Sure, my question was a little different. Did you, I mean, do you recall any venture investors who were interested in acquiring a stake in the company in 2014? Um, well, PFM was one uh, that was sort of more short-term focused, um, and um, and then yes, and I, I need a minute just to think about it in the fall of fourteen. Um, And I guess while you're thinking about it, I, yeah. I don't mean to limit it unfairly by venture because my, my follow-up question is going to be about private equity companies because I think you mentioned those as well. Yeah. Um, so what I'm what I'm thinking is, as we engaged in doing this C2 round, and I think this is also just a a reference to as I had raised money over the years, we would meet um, with a lot of funds and they would sort of one of the first questions was are you going to take the company public how fast are you going to take the company public and we really did not want <coughs> investors who were focused on short-term liquidity because we knew we needed time and really wanted to remain private with a small shareholder base so I mean there was a lot of early on venture capital funds we met with in the 2014 time frame um, there was a range of investment funds, um, some associated with the ultimately the transaction that we um, that we ended up not taking money from. I, I can't sit here and tell you names, but I'm sure we could come back to you with some of them um, if we had the chance to just go back and look at notes from that time. Okay, so I guess other than the uh, other than the PFM and the and the groups affiliated with, can you can you recall any venture or private equity funds that were that it expressed an interest in acquiring an equity stake in Theranos in 2014? Um, <coughs> I believe, um, <coughs> so I, I don't Excuse know, bless you, Excuse me. Um, for not getting right. very sick. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, so I, I think there was discussions with Mubadla at that time. Um, I. Um, I, I don't know if BlackRock conversations had started at that time. Um, there, there were others. I can't. I can't remember the names uh, sitting here now. But but I'm sure. Again, we could we could come back to you with them. We had the chance to go back and look at documents. I, I guess through this sentence, are you trying to express to Mr. Murdoch that there's a lot of potential interest in Theranos from from uh, private equity and venture type funds? In Theranos? No, I think what we were trying to express is that there was interest, but the interest uh, was married with an interest in um, going public or having shorter term returns, and that we didn't think this was going to be a company that was going to have short term returns. And so instead, we were trying to find shareholders to be owners of the company long term. You, you mentioned that you drafted this document with others. Who did, who did you draft this document with? I remember working on earlier versions of it with Riley Bechtel. Anyone else besides Mr. Bechtel? I don't know. <coughs> did Mr. Bechtel uh, review this document before it was sent out to Mr. Murdoch and others? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You can put that one aside. Did you ever tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that Theranos had developed proprietary devices that could conduct all of the blood tests that a central lab could conduct using only a few drops of blood? Would you want to say that one more time? Did you ever tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that Theranos had developed proprietary devices that could conduct all of the blood tests that a central lab could conduct using only a few drops of blood? I don't know. We might have. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make the statement to investors or potential investors? I don't know. Was that statement true in 2010 
um, from 2010 to 2014. Uh, yes, with respect to the design of the mini lab. Did you ever tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that Theranos had developed proprietary <coughs> devices that could conduct all of the blood tests that a central lab con could conduct using a few drops of blood and that those devices were ready for patient testing? I don't know that we said it in those words, um, but generally that was what we were working to do with mini lab going into the FDA in that time frame. Was the mini lab ready for patient testing in 2000, from 2010 to 2014? We thought it was at that time. Even in 2010? The earlier version, which would have been the, the three series devices, we believed was, yes, you at, at that time. You believe that the TSPU 3 Series was ready to conduct patient testing on all of the test, tests that a central lab could con conduct? I think there's two different points. One is the point about the, the design and capability of the TSPU architecture. <coughs> Separately, um, we thought we were ready in 2010. The concept was to take the technology into the FDA to try to get CLIA waived to be able to do clinical testing. We ended up not doing that and changing our business model, but we believed that we were in a place in which we w would have been able to do that. I'm sorry, I, should, I, I just want to make sure I understand that. The, the, when you say you, you believed you had the infrastructure to do that, did, was it your belief that the TSPU 3 Series was capable of running all different kinds of lab tests? The, the architecture, right? The, the concept of the way that that family of devices was designed um, allowed that, allowed end-to-end -end testing. Right? The, the three series was configured to run some tests. Uh, the four series had a broader range of processors and detectors in it to do what we thought was any test. Right, so just sticking with the three series, it was never your understanding that the three series could run all tests, um, or, or even that it had the architecture to run all tests? It, it, it had the core architecture, it didn't have the other detector modules to do it, so no, it was not popular, it was not configured to do it. And had Theranos taken any steps to configure a 3 series machine to, to do all different kinds of tests? To do multiple ranges in product development we did, but then that became the 4 series. Right? Did you, did you ever tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that Theranos manufactured all of its blood analyzers? Um, I, I don't know. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make that statement to investors or potential investors? I don't know. Was the statement true in 2013 and 2014? With respect to the mini lab family, yes. But it wouldn't have been true with respect to the machines that Theranos was using for patient <coughs> testing, correct? Well, there, as you know, Theranos was using some of the Minilab family for patient testing. It was also <coughs> using other machines. That it hadn't manufactured, correct? Correct, yes. Did you tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that demonstration tests of Theranos's manufactured devices <coughs> would be run on devices manufactured by Theranos, even though they were not going to be tested on those devices? Can we hear that question again? Sure. I don't, I don't understand. Did you tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that demonstrations you were conducting uh, for investors or potential investors were would be run on devices manufactured by Theranos, even though they weren't being run on devices manufactured by Theranos? No. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani say that? No. Did you ever tell investors uh, or prospective investors that Johns Hopkins had validated Theranos' devices? I, I don't remember using those words, no. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani say that? I don't think so. Would that have been true in 2013 and 2014? As you know, they've done an assessment. Um, I, I don't think we thought of it as validating the device. And, and the assessment, just to be clear, you had understood, was on the a three series device, right? No, at that time we had the architecture of the four series as well. Which one did you bring? 
you know, brought a three series, but we presented on some of the four series, the data and the architecture. <coughs> Did you tell investors or potential investors in 2014 that the Walgreens contract was going well and that Theron is expected to open hundreds of stores by the end of 2015? You know, you've already covered that ground two or three times a year. I, I don't think I said that. Um, I, I don't think so. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwan say this? I don't know. Would the statement have been true in 2014? Would you say it one more time? Would the statement have been true? No, I know there's just multiple pieces I was trying to remember oh, okay. all of it. Um, did you tell investors or potential investors in 2014 that the Walgreens contract was going well and that Theron is expected to open hundreds of stores in 2015? I think so. I mean, I, I think that it would have been true at that time. I, at least we believed it to be true at that time. At the time, <coughs> Theron and Walgreens were in the uh, midst of renegotiating the contract, correct? In 2014? Yes. Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, there were continual discussions about potential amendments to the contract throughout the duration of our relationship. So why did you think that you would be rolling out hundreds of stores in 2015? Um, at, at Walgreens? Yes. Um, based on um, my interactions with Sunny and the interactions that I personally had with Walgreens leadership. Did you tell investors or potential investors in 2014 that the Safeway contract was going well and that Theranos would be rolling out to Safeway stores in early 2015? Um, I don't think so. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani say that? I don't think so. Would that statement have been true in 2014? I don't know about the second part in terms of whether we thought we would be rolling out, and I'm, I don't think we thought it was going well. <coughs> Did you tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that analyzers that Theranos manufactured were being deployed in the battlefield? Um, no. Did you hear Mr. Balwani tell investors or potential investors that? No. Was that true in 2013 or 2014? No. I mean, it was not true, yes. Did you tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that analyzers that Theranos manufactured were being deployed in Afghanistan? No. Did you hear Mr. Balwani tell investors or potential investors that? No. Was this statement true in 2013 or 2014? It was not true. Did you tell Dignity Health that Theranos had deployed the TSPU in the battlefield? No. Did you hear Mr. Balwani told Dignity Health that? No. Would that have been true in 2013 or 2014? No. Did you tell Dignity Health that 75% of Theranos' historical revenues was from the military? No. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani tell Dignity Health that? No. Would that have been true in 2013 or 2014? I don't think so. Did you tell Steve Bird at Safeway that Theranos had deployed its TSPU on the battlefield? No. Did you hear Mr. Balwani, Mr. Balwani tell Steve Bird that? No. Would that have been true in 2013 or 2014? No. And would that also have been true in 2011 or 2012? It would not. Did you tell Walgreens that Theranos had deployed its TSPU on military helicopters? No. Did you hear Mr. Balwani tell that? <coughs> I did not. Would that have been true any time from 2010 to 2014? We, we did not deploy on helicopters. You did not deploy on helicopters ever? Correct. Right? And I think they were used to transport the devices for AFRICOM to Africa, but um, we didn't deploy the devices on helicopters. Did you tell Intermountain Healthcare that Theranos had a relationship with the DOD that spanned about a decade? I don't think so. Did you hear Mr. Balwani tell Intermountain that? No. Would that have been true in 2013 or 2014? No. Did you tell investors or potential investors in 
2013 or 2014 that Theranos had grown from cash from its pharmaceutical and military contracts over time. Are you said, did I tell potential investors in 13 or 14? Yes. I don't know. Did you hear Mr. Balwani <coughs> make that statement? I don't know. Would that have been true in 2013 or 2014? I think so. Why? We had received payments from pharma and from this DOD study and used that to grow. How much in combined payments had you made from pharmaceutical companies and from military contracts by the time of 2013, 2014? I don't know. Did you tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that Theranos did not need to raise new capital for the operations of its business? I don't think so. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make this statement to uh, investors or potential investors? I don't think so. Would that have been true in 2013 or 2014? Not to execute on the plans we wanted to execute on. And which plans were those? Um, the broad rollout at retail. Did you tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that Theranos had enough cash for working capital? I don't think so. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make the statement to investors or potential investors? I don't know. Would that have been true in 2013 or 2014? I think it depends on when. Uh, um, and why would it matter as to when? We received the Walgreens payment in the end of 13, and that was a important event in the context of having the working capital to execute on our plans. Did you tell investors or uh, potential investors in late 2014 that um, Theranos was on track to make over $100 million in revenues by the end of the year? I don't think so. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? I don't know. Do you know if Mr. Balwani made that statement? I don't. Would that have been true in late 2014? I don't think so. Did you tell investors or potential investors that Theranos had made over $100 million in 2014? No. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? I don't think so. Is that a true statement? No. Did you tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that Theranos was projected to make $1 billion in 2015 and $2 billion in 2016? I did not personally. I know that was in some of the financial models. The numbers generally like that were in some of the financial models that Theranos shared. And who shared those financial models with investors? Uh, generally, to the extent that we presented on them, Sunny uh, shared them. Did you ever present that information to investors or potential investors? I personally did not. <coughs> Did you tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that Theranos' engagement with the FDA was voluntary and there was no requirement to seek clearance or approval for its tests on the TSPU? Um, I, I don't think we said that in those words. Which words did you use? We generally described being an LDT and that we wanted to, we thought, proactively engage uh, with the FDA on getting clearance of every LDT we would bring up. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that Theranos' engagement with FDA was voluntary? Uh, again, I don't think so in those words. Did you ever hear Mr. Balwani tell investors or uh, potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that there was no requirement for Theranos to seek clearance or approval of its tests on the TSPA? I don't think so. Did you tell investors or potential investors in 2013 or 2014 that uh, Theranos' engagement with FDA was voluntary and there was no requirement to seek clearance or approval for any other Theranos devices like the nanotainer? You know, you've covered this at length in other portions of this deposition, both today and last month. Do you understand the question? Is it, I'm just repeating it back. The question is, did I tell investors that we did not have to get clearance on the nanotainer? Yes. No. Did you hear Mr. Balwani make that statement? I don't think so. 
What is your current relationship with Sunny Palwani? I haven't talked for a long time. When did you first get to know him? Um, I think I met him in 2002. How did you meet him? I was studying at a program in Beijing University in China, and he was there. Were you introduced by friends? Uh, but we weren't introduced. Yes. When was that? Earlier in 2002. Were you introduced by then? No, we weren't. We weren't introduced. I just knew had known him at Stanford. So how did you get to know one another? We were in the same Stanford program at Beijing University. Were you and Sunny Balwani ever engaged in a romantic relationship? Yes. When? <coughs> Over a long period of time. Um, I think starting in um, around and shortly after I met him, I think more seriously in around 2004 when I was starting the company. Um, and then um, it was a complicated relationship um, through the, the time that he joined the company and then later when he was working at the company. How long were you and Mr. Balwani together in a relationship? Um, it was there, it was on and off over a period of time, but um, throughout the time that um, he was at um, the company until he left um, in, I guess it was last year. So you broke up with Mr. Balwani when, you, when he left the company? No, I think the personal relationship had died before that, um, but it, it was on and off throughout the time prior to him joining and then after he joined. Did you live together? We did. Uh, when did you start living together? Um, I think in 05 or 06. I think 05. For how long did you live together? On and off between 05 and uh, 2016. And did you live together at the two, is it 227 um, Park Up? Is it Park Avenue? We did. Okay. Uh, where do you live now? Uh, do you, do, sorry, do, were you living with Mr. Balwani the whole time he was at Theranos? Or, I, 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 I said, you want to? Uh, almost all of it, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you own uh, the, your current resident? Did Theranos employees know that you and Mr. Balwani were dating? Some of them did. Did they know that you were living together? Some of them did. Did the board know that you were dating? Some of them did. Uh, who did? When he first joined the board, the board members knew him as my boyfriend. Um, and then later, um, I talked with some of them about it. Um, and um, I've had conversations with Riley Bechtel about it, um, with uh, David Boys, with Jim Mattis, um, others. Did you ever tell investors that you and Mr. Balwani had a romantic relationship at the time that you were uh, asking them to invest in fairness? No. Have you told any shareholders that you and Mr. Balwani had a romantic relationship? And Riley knew prior to investing. Um, I Generally, my personal life is my personal life. Is that why you didn't share that information with potential investors? Yes. What happened to the relationship? What do you mean? Uh, how did it end? The personal relationship? Yes. Um, you know, I think when he joined the company, it was, we had spent, I think it was four or five years together by that point, and <coughs> really um, understood that our connection was about trying to create and work together. It wasn't really about um, the romantic part. And um, once we started working together, it was a very intense working relationship. And there, the sort of romantic piece that was there at the very beginning died. I, I don't think it happened in one moment, um, but it was very clear that 
we were colleagues. And so when did you end up breaking off the relationship with Mr. Balwani? The romantic relationship? Yes. Um, it, it happened over a period of time. Mr. Balwani is no longer at Theranos, correct? That's right. When did he leave? I believe around Memorial Day of 2016. Why did he leave? <coughs> um, I, I was trying to restructure the company. It was time for new leadership and a different leadership structure. Was it mutual? Yes. Uh, did he want to leave the company? Did you ask him that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be speculating. You know? Did you have any understanding as to why he wanted to leave? I, I think he knew it was time. Uh, for a different, a different structure. Did you ever tell investors or shareholders that Mr. Paul Wanning was asked to retire? Was asked to retire? Um, or, I, I don't think I would have said it in those words. Had Mr. Paul Wanning previously been thinking about leaving the company prior to Memorial Day 2016? I mean, we, we had multiple conversations about it over the years. I don't know, I don't know what he was thinking, actually. So if you uh, pick up Exhibit 221 again. Okay. And you turn to uh, a page with base number ending 6427, which is page 189. <coughs> so you'll see there are a number of text messages between you and Mr. Balwani on July 15th, 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look, maybe <coughs> nine messages down from the top at 4.44 p.m. Mr. Balwani writes to you and he says, I worked for six years, day and night, to help you. I thought it would be better. I know you were angry in your way and upset with me for not doing everything you wanted me to do. Do you remember this conversation with him? Not specifically, no. And then you write back and you say, um, there are question marks, and you say, I was just think, you know, thinking about texting you in that minute, by the way. It's just hard to transition. Do you see that? Yeah. Uh, do you recall uh, why he was writing you about um, the fact that he'd worked pretty hard <coughs> on the company? No, I mean, uh, I don't. And then he writes back to you at 4 46 p.m. He says, I am responsible for everything at Theranos. All have been my decisions, too. Do you see that? I do. Did you agree that you and Mr. Balwani were managing the company together and making decisions for the company together? Yeah, I and mean, we made him president of the company, and he wanted to run the company and run operations, and I let him do that. And then if you look down a few more text messages, um, there is one that's sent by Mr. Balwani at 4.49 p.m., and he says, I'm not leaving until we break even. We will do this together, and I will be by uh, your so self until then. Can't leave like this. Um, what did you understand him to mean by that? Well, first of all, do you remember? I, I don't. I don't remember this text exchange. Um, I'm just trying to read the text above it to get context. Um, I mean, he's clearly talking about getting the company to a point in which it's at break even. Um, I, I don't know what else he means for that. Okay. And then um, at 4.51, he writes again. He says, and yes, I do dislike the direction you've taken with all this PR and all legal work and a lot of other things. Do you see that? Yes. Uh, were you aware that he uh, disagreed with the PR strategy that the company had taken? at this time? Um, 
I, I'm not sure that that's what that's referring to. I think that he had specific um, strong disagreements with certain people on our team who were advising us to do certain things on both the PR and legal <coughs> side. Uh, who's, uh, who was he disagreeing with? I, I mean, you, you need to talk to him about this because I'll be guessing what he's referring to specifically, but um, I, I think he'd be able to talk about it. You, know. okay. you just said that you, you thought that um, this is referring to him disagreeing with others. Who were you thinking of when you said that? Um, he he had disagreements with the, the general counsel that, that I brought in. Uh, anyone else? Um, some of the teams that she put in place on the PR and legal side. I'm sorry, put in place on the PR and legal side. And then um, at 4.53 p.m., a few more text messages down, he writes to you, he says, things are different now, we need to get the business to break even, and then I will leave. We are different when it comes to business. Um, did you agree that you and he had different mindsets when it came to business strategy? I don't know if it's business strategy. We had different mindsets on how to run the company. Okay, and, and what were those uh, differences? Just very different leadership styles, management styles. Was there anything else that was different about how you and he wanted to run the business? I mean, we, there, I'm sure many things, I, I, I would need to sit here and try to come up with a list, um, but we, we're just very different in how we approach it, and I'm, I'm running the company very differently now. I think there's something you mentioned last time that you, that, you, that you had a very different leadership style than Mr. Balwani. How would you describe Mr. Balwani's leadership style? He, he comes out of a, a pure tech and sort of software company environment where um, there's very aggressive schedules, very aggressive goals, and you know, companies that have um, had a, a different sort of work environment than the, the kind of culture that that I I resonate with and I'm trying to build in the company now. I, I guess looking back, do you have concerns about how his leadership style impacted the performance of the company? I have concerns with the way that um, certain people were treated. Yeah. And you know, I guess is there a category of people or sort of like a, a group? No, I I think that um, we were tr we we're trying to do something that's really hard and really big, and everybody makes mistakes along the way, and the ability to engage with people to um, patiently and humbly and. Um, nicely try to overcome hiccups is, is a more successful style and um, I think we could have done a better job at that. You can put that on the side. Do you have an employment agreement with Theranos? I do. Has it been modified at any time during, um, or when was the first employment agreement that you signed with Theranos? Would have been 2004. In 2004. Yep. Has that agreement been modified several times since then? I don't think so. How are you compensated by Theranos? Um, I have a salary, and over the years, I've been given uh, stock awards. Okay. Have you been compensated in any other way besides your salary and, and the stock awards? I don't think so. And what has been your salary in the last, um, I guess, five years? Um, I think it was $200,000 a year uh, for some period of time, and then um, it was raised to $400,000. Um, 
think in 2015, and then recently the, the board just a couple weeks ago approved raising it again. They approved raising it again? Yeah. So what is your salary now? Um, well, we haven't made it effective because I don't know whether I want to take a salary increase right now or not. I've been thinking about it, um, but they would have made it commensurate with other members of the management team, um, which is six hundred thousand um, dollars. So, when was the board discussing this? You said a few weeks ago. Yes. And when is it supposed to go effective? It would have been effective a few weeks ago. Um, I hadn't um, had our teams process it. Do you receive a paycheck every two weeks? I do. Um, and in terms of your ownership of the company, have you always had a majority ownership of Theranos? Um, obviously, when I founded it, I did. Um, then, no. And then I got stock awards over a period of time and recently used my stock to, to recapitalize the company to reprice investors so that our A, B, and C investors wouldn't be diluted. So I, I don't anymore. What is your percentage ownership of the company now? I think it's about 30 percent, or somewhere 30 to 32 percent. Uh, and do you hold a majority of the voting rights for the company? I do. And you still do now? I do. Um, have the other members of your senior management received their salary increases already? Yes. Um, salary increases or, or stock awards we were in the process of issuing. I wanted to give additional stock awards to the management team. Go off the record at 4.37 p.m. Right. Why don't we just take a couple minutes and then we'll see if there's anything additional. We are back on the record at 4.47 p.m. Ms. Holmes, did you have any substantive conversations with the SEC staff during the break? No. Have any of Theranos' investors complained to you, uh, or are you aware of any investors complaining to anyone at Theranos that statements that were made to them prior to their investments were not true or, or accurate? Not outside of PFM. Uh, what, did you, what do you understand uh, PFM's complaints to be? Well, doesn't PFM's complaint speak for itself? I mean, it's a 75-page document, and you can't ask her to try and summarize that. I mean, I, I generally understood it to replay the Wall Street Journal narrative. Was there, is there anything outside of PFM's complaint or any other conversations you might have had with them um, in which you're aware that there were other statements outside of the complaint that they believed were not true? that PFM believed were not true? Yes. I, I haven't had any conversations with PFM directly about it, so I don't know anything beside the lawsuit that they filed. So, I, I just more specifically, I think I understand your answer is going to be the, um, in connection with the sort of the tender offer process and the uh, uh, recapitalizing some of those some of those investors, did any investors express any concerns about the accuracy of the information they had received from the company to date? Not to my knowledge. Ms. Holmes, we have no further questions at this time. We may, however, call you again to testify in this investigation, and should that be necessary, we'll contact um, your attorneys. Ms. Holmes, do you wish to clarify anything? Can, can, can we, uh, before you, can we take a quick break um, before she answers that question? Uh, there's a pending question. We don't we, I, I, I guess the, the question is whether she personally has anything to clarify, but then if, we'll also ask the question if council has anything to clarify. Uh, uh, okay. okay. Ms. Holmes, do you wish to clarify anything? Um, no. <laughs> Thank you. Do you wish do, to add anything you, to the statements that you've made today? Um, I, I, I don't think so. Uh, Mr. Neal and Mr. Dwyer, would you like to ask can, any clarifying can, questions? Can we just take a two minute break? Everybody can stay here, so I'll just take two minutes. Go off the record at 449. You're back on the record at 5.04 p.m. Ms. Holmes, did you have any substantive conversations with the SEC staff during the break? No. Okay, we, have, we don't have any questions, but I will reiterate on the record what I said just a minute ago to you all outside the presence of the record which is that in 
your your questions about whether uh, Ms. Holmes had heard complaints from any investors. We believe council received some complaints from investors at various points, and we're going to try and figure out whether there is a way to identify for you who those uh, complainants were without waiving privileges, because we, we believe some of those were communicated in a privileged way to Ms. Holmes, and so we'll get back to you with, a, with a, either a confirmation that what I just said is accurate or a clarification. Thank you. Would any of the other council like to ask clarifying questions today? No. Nope. Shockingly, no. <laughs> this ends DVD 5 of 5, and we are off the record at 5 of 5 on August 23rd, 2017. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you very much.